The Democratic Congressman Joe Sestak of Pennsylvania and Republican Congressman Bob Bishop of Utah, both of whom are members of the House Armed Services Committee. Good morning, gentlemen. Good to see you. Same here. All right, Congressman Bishop, I have to start with you. If you know that the president has threatened to veto this bill, if these new planes are included, these additional planes to the tune of two billion dollars, why would you be the one adding this amendment? These planes are needed for American security, period. We need this plane. Okay, but Defense Secretary Gates says we don't need them. We're not using them in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So then why do we need the F-22? And if we've already got 190 on the budget, why do we need an extra seven? Well, what has happened is over the last 15 years, there have been 30 different studies. They all say the same thing. The 187 planes are not enough. 240 is the minimum. And even at that, we put our air superiority at risk. 187 is a political number. It has nothing to do with the military need. The military has always been secure that, and has been consistent that they need this number of planes just to make sure that our security in the future is there. And it's a matter of priorities. If we can find $5 billion for programs like ACORN, we should be able to find $3 billion to make sure the security of this country goes forward by building these planes and securing these jobs. Okay, Congressman Sestak, if Congressman Bishop's logic is right and he says we need 240. What's the difference between 187 that are pre-approved and 194? Is it ultimately jobs? Um, obviously I disagree with my my friend uh, Rob. Um, I agree with the Chief of Staff of the Air Force. For the safety and for the defense of America we have more than enough at 190 and here's why. As a Navy Admiral, I actually did the analysis that demonstrated that there's only one country, China, that is able to have the very sophisticated radar that you actually need such a very stealthy, almost invisible aircraft. And when we go in on that type of scenario, you need this very stealthy aircraft to actually go through and create a corridor by which you destroy a number of radar sites so that the rest of the remaining less stealthy aircraft can go in behind them and do their job. In fact, what the Chief of Staff of the Air Force wants to do is say, we've got enough of these aircraft, and let's buy 2,500 of the F-35 in order to have their capability, which is more than sufficient to handle all the other threats in the world from North Korea to Iran. This is the best use of our defenses for the safety of our troops as they fight the war overseas when there's only one country we need this for. Am I concerned about jobs? I actually have a plan in my district that makes parts for the F-22. But they can then shift over to the 2,500 aircraft and begin to make parts for them. And besides, all those aircraft who are buying on the F-22, they are actually, we're going to continue to build them for years to come because we've, we've still got them out there being procured. Congressman Bishop, how do you respond? Well, the good... My friend Joe is a good Navy man, but the Air Force has clearly said, including the Secretary, that 187 is what they politically can afford. He also said in our committee, 240 is what they want and what they need. The 22 and the 35 were designed to work together. One doesn't replace the other. And that is exactly right. In fact, General Corley of Air Combat Command said not only does 187 not meet the needs of the Air Force, but that they weren't consulted when they came with this particular number. So it goes back to the bottom line. We need at least 240 as a minimum of the 22 to work with the 2035s for the security of this country in the future. We have other countries like China and Russia building their fifth generation fighter and they're in line to build more than they will need. They're going to sell those other planes to countries like Venezuela and Iran. And we have to do two things to keep air superiority. Technological advancement, which the 22 gives us, and we don't have it today and superior, superior numerical advantage because we may be needing those planes in multiple theaters in the future. You can't make the assumption we'll always have the same kind of a conflict like we have in Iraq today. So, Congressman Bishop, if the President is threatening to veto this amendment and will not sign off on the defense bill, and the Senate, as I understand, is expected to vote on this this morning, when you see the outcome of the Senate, will you then pull the amendment? I mean, it doesn't seem as though you've got the support you'll need to make sure that it gets passed. 
it is amazing that congress has pushed this issue this far and they have pushed it this far because the military the air force is right the obama administration is wrong on this issue and we're not talking about today we're talking about the security of this country ten fifteen years down the line and once again we find five ten billion dollars here and there for all sorts of programs we should be able to find it for the security of this country in the future that's what we need we should have it and i don't think that the administration will actually veto it when they get the final bill really because senator, senator do, carl levin senator john mccain I mean, as you know senator carl levin is the head of of the senate um, armed services committee both of them have said that they believe it should be removed and they were outvoted in their committee at the same time i'm sorry this is what the military the air force has always said they have been consistent with it we have letters from the air national guard from air combat command i'm sorry the bottom line is we need these planes it's designed for what we need to do this is what we have to go in the future we should not skimp on the defense of this country period you All know right. it's it's interesting this is a plane that obviously was born in the cold war against the soviet union when we had the no. soviet union to fight we are now in a global war of terror, and, and my good friend is absolutely right. The F-35 is not a substitute for the F-22. You need so many of them to do the one scenario, China. But the F-35 is absolutely as stealthy front on. And when you put it in there with a jamming aircraft, it can do the same type of mission that an F-22 is. Look, we're not fighting the Soviet Union anymore. We do have China. But the rest of our threats require a lot more aircraft, and at $60 million for the F-35 compared to $250 billion for F-22, let's get the right types of aircraft right, out there gentlemen. for the future. Thank gentlemen, you. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Great having you on. Send us your reaction to this F-22 argument. What should the government do about the plane orders? Email us at moneyforbreakfast at foxbusiness.com. It involves tons of jobs, 25,000 directly impacted by building each plane. Coming up, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke won't find any friends on Capitol Hill today, or well, apparently so, as lawmakers point the finger at the central bank for the economic crisis. Is Bernanke being...